Well done. Thank, Thank you, Ben. Well, my next guest managed the difficult feat, check this out, of pulling off a convincing and utterly original April Fool's joke and even make some money out of it. Dan Baines is actually a forensic consultant with a rather unusual hobby for making props for magicians. And with that in mind, he joins me now. Hello, Dan. Hi there, good afternoon. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Listen, now you've got to tell me and explain to all our lovely listeners, what is this April Fool's joke all about? Um, well, I don't know, it didn't really start out as an April Fool. It just started out as an interest, um, as you mentioned, through my uh, magic tricks that I invent and uh, sort of sell to magicians around the world. Yeah. I bump into some quite unusual characters. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of them makes um, what's called Fiji mermaids, and they used to s they used them for the sort of Victorian freak shows, and they were like half monkey, half fish, sort of really dodgily stuck together uh, yeah. like taxidermy you know not real monkeys and real fish well they, were, they, they used to be yeah and then they used to sort of you know tell people that they were actual, they were actual mermaids that sailors <laughs> had brought back from all around the globe <laughs> Um, so I've got a friend um, in Mexico who makes these. You've got some strange <laughs> mates, yeah. Dan. <laughs> I have. Yeah, I do have some strange mates. And uh, he did one last year where there was this mermaid washed up on a beach in Florida. <laughs> I'm loving this, and, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's quite a few photographs of that. Um, I mean, I'm originally from Derbyshire and I go up there every weekend. Yeah. Uh, so I thought to myself, well, Derbyshire is nowhere near the sea. So I needed to think of something that um, I could do that was... You know, equally as convincing. So um, I ended up making this fairy. Uh, it just started out as a. I was just sort of interested in how they were built, really. So you I made one. a fairy. Well, yeah. I. Uh, how do you make a fairy? Oh, that'd, be, that'd be giving it away. <laughs> if I you know, it's, it's worth money to me now. Okay. But in reality, you know, it was really easy. It was. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of speculation on the on lots of websites about the fact that it was probably a, a small monkey corpse that I used. <gasps> but in fact, sure it was a, yeah, that was well, that was some speculation. Mm -hmm. um, someone had even gone down to as detailed as analysing the photographs and matching them with m certain monkey skulls and See, saying that the forehead isn't quite human no. enough. And There's one word for that man who did that, isn't there, Dan? And that word is Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fact it was, it was just a plastic skeleton that I covered in pretty much like paper mache and wow. stuck some hair on it. <laughs> and uh, it took me a few goes to get the colour right. Uh, is she a pretty fairy? Um, not really, no. <laughs> you, you must have seen the photographs. It looks like the old um, Iron Age Pete Bogman. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's pretty highly um, decayed and uh, yeah, it's not, not too good looking. So, <laughs> and people fell for it a hook, line and sinker, didn't they? Some so, people. So what did yeah. you do? You, took, you, took a, you, you laid out this fairy, what, in a wood or somewhere? Yeah, I took it up to a, a local hill, um, which is quite sort of remote and very picturesque. So, yeah. if you were to go up there and, you know, you, you know, if someone said there's fairies here, you'd probably think, well, yeah, it's probably a place where they could exit. Hang out, yeah. Yeah, so I went up there with my son and a friend and a camera, um, <laughs> took some photographs, and then took it back home, brought it back down to London where I live, yeah. and put some old rubber gloves on, got a police evidence bag, and took fit pictures of it in the kitchen with my girlfriend holding it, so it looked <laughs> like there were proper lab photographs with a ruler <laughs> by the side of the body. <laughs> And, and that was the most convincing bit, really, because I said that forensic experts had looked at it and anth anthropologists had <laughs> examined the bones and they were hollow, so they'd be lightweight and uh, everything, really. I sort of made it as realistic as possible, then just posted it up on the website, and then I contacted the English tabloid papers at first, who just laughed at me. <laughs> um, I, I rang the sun, and he basically put the phone down on me. So what, you I, told him that it was a real fairy? I just thought, I've got a good April Fool's hoax, if you want, because yeah. I knew April Fool's on a, April 1st was on a Sunday, yeah. so I needed to get it out there. Yeah. Um, I know it wasn't going to happen in the week, so I thought, well, it's ideal for a Sunday newspaper. And none of them were having it. None of them, none of them wanted it at all. No, so I thought, well, you know, fair enough. Uh, so I <laughs> fair took it, enough. <laughs> I took it fair enough. Yeah, I took it to America <laughs> instead, and yeah. within oh, twenty-four no. hours, yeah. it went absolutely banzai. It they was all over the place. They stuff <laughs> up all day long, don't they? They fall and for anything, hook, uh, line, and sinker. Yes. Yeah. Well, so what happened then to the model in the episode? So people in America fell for it. They and, did, and and it all went as you say, banzai, which yeah. is a very good phrase. <laughs> and then, and then it, uh, what happened to uh, someone bought it, didn't they? 
They did, yeah. I put it on eBay. I eventually revealed it was a hoax, yeah. although there are still people out there who are convinced it's real. <laughs> and the whole eBay thing and me revealing it's a hoax really? is a big conspiracy theory, so I've been told to be quiet by the government. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> people... Who bought it? Some donut from LA or something? No, no, some, some, uh, it was a private auction, so I can't reveal who it was, but it was an art collector in yeah. America. Oh. How much did you get for it? Um, £280. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, we're loving it. <laughs> I thought it was going to go for more than that, though, to be honest. Did I, was, you? I had, you know, I had four figures in my mind oh. at one point uh, <laughs> because I had so many hits on the site. Um, I think in total I've had over a hundred thousand hits, and my actual website 100, provider, 000? yeah, my website provider um, actually gave me the free space, gave me the extra space because they thought the story was so good, and I had to keep buying extra bandwidth. So I was spending, <laughs> I've spent like over a hundred pounds in just stopping the site from going down. Crushing. It was getting that many hits yeah <laughs> you've only so, made a small profit so, yeah only made a small profit but it's for me it's just been like a large scale yeah. magic trick that I've yeah. performed yeah. Um, you know, when you watch it when you go and see a magician for that split second when he's performing something that's really good mm. you know you do believe think it think it's real of course yeah you do believe it and then afterwards you think well of course it can't be real yeah. and it's the same thing with this but you want to believe it's real don't you, you do yeah and a lot of people you know I've had to let a lot of people down gently I had to write um, quite a <laughs> A, a delicate email no. to people who were genuine believers oh and say, dear. you know, look, um, you know, you've been, you know, sort of my, my audience and I've been the magician and for that split second, you know, I've... I've had you I've over. I've stirred your imagination. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've stirred your imagination and made your day a bit more memorable and, you know, make it as nice as possible. And, you know, and that's great. But I've had, so, I've had loads of really good feedback and only one um, bad email, really. Look, um, um, were they very abusive, the bad email? No, no, the bad emails weren't abusive. Um, That's a shame. I seem to have uncovered <laughs> some secret society through the... Oh, dear. ...in the English countryside of a long line of people... Well, fairy ...who've been watches. passed down, basically, yeah, people who've been given the task of looking after fairy sites who actually look after them. And the fact that I revealed a place, which I, I don't know, I didn't know if it was a real no. fairy place or not, but... Um, supposedly there's a lot of angry um, gonna track you people down. out there. So do you think fairies are real then? <laughs> do I personally? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a sceptic. Uh, I, I tend to like to believe in a lot, you know, I think it's nice to believe in yeah. some things. It yeah. makes yeah. life a bit more enjoyable in such a, what can be quite a nasty world. So. I believe in Father Christmas. What yeah. Do you mean, what do you mean you believe in him? I do believe in him. Well, yeah, but everyone believes in him. Father Christmas just is. <laughs> he is, isn't he? doesn't it? believe in him. He's a ledge. He's, he's just there. <laughs> he's he is a Father legend. Christmas. <laughs> it's one of those things, though, that fairies are in every single culture around the world. It doesn't matter what um, country you go to. They've always they got exist. something in folklore mm. that's got something, you know, that's about eight inches tall and a bit mischievous. So, I mean, <laughs> it sounds like Ben. <laughs> <laughs> it has to originate from somewhere. So yeah. if you look at it in sort of logical terms, mm. then it all stems back to something. But as to what that something is, I don't know. But mm. it's definitely not a plastic skeleton covered in paper mache with ginger <laughs> hair. But ginger hair. What'd you give a ginger hair for? Well, that was the only thing I had to hand. I had like a, um, a, like a Mel B Bo Selector man, <laughs> and it had ginger hair, so I cut some of that off. And, but so your, your model was one of the Spice Girls? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dead Spice. But, you know, I thought ginger would look quite good, because when you find, you know, like mummies and Pete Bogman, they've all, they all yeah, have... They They're uh, a bit like, rusty, aren't they? They all have sort of reddish hair dyed yeah. from the stuff that they've been rhyming for <laughs> hundreds of years. Now your hub hobby is uh, making magicians props. How did that start? Um, it all stemmed <gasps> from just curiosity really. I, I'm not...